Today's video is sponsored by Intel. Hey everyone, I'm here in Guatemala City. I've been in Guatemala for about a week now, creating videos, uh, showing all the things this beautiful country has to offer. But today, I have something a bit special. I wanna step back and share the journey of how I got to this position. At least once a week, I get a question from one of you asking how to become a YouTuber, or how to travel full time, or how to get into this lifestyle that I've been living. It's not an easy answer, but there is an answer. And in this video, I'm gonna share that with you. But first, I wanna talk a bit about the technology that makes all of this possible. This laptop here is the Acer Swift 3. It was sent to me recently by Intel, and I've had a lot of fun exploring everything it has to offer. You know, it's great for traveling. This thing only weighs 2.2 pounds. And when you like to travel with only carry-on bags like I do, every pound counts. But it's not just light, it's powerful as well. You see, this laptop is powered by the new Intel Evo platform. It has battery life, which is about as good as any laptop I've ever had. It's rated as nine plus hours of normal usage. And I've been editing videos, I've been editing photos, I've been planning the next stage of my journey on this, on this travels through Guatemala. But you know, it wasn't always like this. In fact, by a pretty incredible coincidence, it was 10 years ago exactly that I took my first big international trip. And it was a trip to Guatemala. This was back in 2011. And it was actually a program through my university. Me and 18 other students spent six weeks traveling through Guatemala. It was a different kind of traveling. You know, we were, we were students, so we were studying. We spent a lot of time reading and taking notes and uh, writing essays, all that student stuff. But you know what's funny? 10 years ago, I didn't even have a laptop. I mean, I had a laptop, but I didn't have it with me in Guatemala. Because back then, laptops were too big. They were too heavy. They were, they were too slow. They were too, yeah, they were too everything. Oh my God, some of these ports, I literally don't know what this is. But technology has changed a lot in the last 10 years, and I've changed too. So I wanna tell you about that journey and how I got to the position I'm in today. But first, let's take a little walk. In some ways, that Guatemala trip was challenging. I mean, I remember writing 3,000 word essays with pen and paper. No Wikipedia, no spell check, nothing. You kids these days don't know how lucky you have it. <laughs> but no, seriously, that trip really opened my eyes to the world around me. And I think it was there 10 years ago that I fell in love with traveling. Buenos dias. And so a couple of years later in 2013, when I was done school, I moved to South Korea. I took a job as an English teacher and I lived just outside Seoul for the next eight months. Now, Korea is an incredible place, and it was a great experience. I saved money and I took that and I was able to travel. I went through Southeast Asia, and I learned what backpacking was all about. But one of the most important things that happened to me was I met these people in Thailand who called themselves digital nomads. You see, they were from California, but they were working with laptops, and they were running their businesses online. This was mind-blowing to me. You know, I didn't even know that was possible. I remember my high school guidance counselor, you know, become an accountant, become a plumber. I don't remember anything about Thailand, but this planted a seed in my mind, which would continue to grow over the next few years. I didn't know how to get there, but I knew that one day I too wanted to be running my own business and creating my own lifestyle. And so after Asia, I continued to travel. In 2014, I moved to France with a working holiday visa. I wanted to do something I was passionate about, but I, I didn't know how. With my visa, there weren't many jobs I could get. I ended up in an Irish pub. Uh, shout out to O'Sullivan's Irish pub. I worked there with some other English speakers and I, I served Jaeger bombs to uh, <laughs> American tourists for the next six months. And on the side, I did something I'd always been passionate about, writing. I started a travel blog and I started telling stories about my experience traveling to these different places. And you know, some of the blog posts did okay. I started to get a little audience, but I wasn't making any money. I didn't know how to make any of this a business. 
And so every night I would work at this bar, sometimes till four in the morning, serving drinks, cleaning tables, telling drunk people it's time to go home now. And during the day I would write, try to write anything really that could get me out of this life situation and into something I was really passionate about. In 2015, I left France and I started to travel. I traveled through Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Scandinavia. I even went to Morocco in North Africa. That was an unforgettable experience. And more than ever before, at this point, I was addicted to traveling. Like there was nothing else I wanted to do in the world but continue to explore. But you know, Paris is an expensive city and I didn't save much money at all this time. I had to go back to Canada. I had to work a different job. I had to move in with my mom again in my mid-twenties. And, uh, you know, in some ways, I was a few steps behind some of my friends who had followed more traditional career paths. But I lived at home and I worked a marketing job for a while and I saved money. And once I had enough, I booked a one-way ticket to Vietnam. And this time, I was fully committed to the writing thing. I was going there with my laptop and not much else. And you know, my blog continued to grow. It was by this point making a few dollars a month, but after six months in Vietnam, I kind of felt like a failure. My blog hadn't taken off the way I wanted it to. And I was just wondering, what am I doing with my life? How much longer can I continue just bouncing around from place to place? This was a dark period. I left Vietnam and I came home to Canada thinking that I was done with travel. But I will say this, there's one other thing I started doing in Vietnam. I picked up a little camera and I made videos not even trying to make a business, but just, just trying to record my memories, you know. I thought one day when I'm old, maybe I'll want to remember the, the year I moved to Vietnam and tried to make it as, as a writer. So I just started filming anything that interested me. And a funny thing happened. Pretty soon the videos were getting more views than the blog. So I, again, I returned to Canada in some ways feeling very lost and with some credit card debt by this point. But that seed I had planted was starting to grow in an unexpected place. It had started to grow with the videos I was now making. So I moved home to Canada, this time to Vancouver. I had a girlfriend by now and we moved there together. I got a job at a typical startup company where you get pizza parties every Friday and you have a beer fridge in the corner of the kitchen. It was okay, but on another level it wasn't okay because I'd experienced something I was passionate about. And now going back to the nine to five was just, I couldn't do it. So in 2017, I quit that job and I moved again, this time to Costa Rica. Me and my girlfriend left our apartment behind. We put some things in storage and we, we flew down. And for the next few months, I lived on the edge of the rainforest in Manuel Antonio, Costa Rica. And I did something I'd never done before. I fully committed to the video stuff. I wasn't doing things anyone else wanted me to be doing. I wasn't chasing another job. I was fully committed. Funny thing happened in Costa Rica. The, the video started to take off. They started to get more views than I could have ever imagined. Other people who lived there were reaching out and wanted to talk about video. I was just someone who had picked up a camera not knowing what I was doing, and now I was having conversation with other videographers about video. I couldn't believe it. It was, it was happening. In late 2017, we left Costa Rica and we moved to Mexico City. I didn't know how long we'd be in Mexico City. At first I thought maybe a month, and then we'd go home to Vancouver, and I don't know. It was just the next stage of the journey. But as soon as I moved to Mexico, my channel exploded. I got way more views than I ever had before. And by early 2018, I was now earning enough revenue through YouTube, through the ads on YouTube videos, 
to sustain myself in Mexico. It had finally happened. That digital nomad dream that I discovered four years earlier in Thailand. I, I had made it. I was doing it. I was living it. And listen, there's more to my story that I'm not gonna get into. It's, it hasn't always been easy. I've been riddled with self-doubt. I've been riddled with imposter syndrome. You know, that feeling that everyone else is good and you don't have any idea what you're doing. Sometimes I still feel that. But I can tell you that when things really open up to me is when I fully committed and I decided I'm gonna be a full-time video creator even before anyone else thought I was. You know, it's a mindset shift that at some point any self-employed person has to take. And after a lot of years of trying and a lot of odd jobs along the way, you know, I also was a painter one summer, I worked for a landscaping company once. The journey is never straightforward. There's always ups and downs, but you just need to make sure you're moving in the right direction. Your path won't look the same as mine, but I can tell you one thing that will be the same. You need the technology that can support you on your journey. That's why I'm really grateful to be making this video with Intel because the Intel Evo platform is supporting creators like myself, allowing a lifestyle that really wasn't possible 10 years ago. But with smaller devices, better batteries, better processors, better Wi-Fi connectivity, we can now dream in ways that we couldn't dream before. It's just up to you what you want that dream to be. Do I sound like one of those corny uh, inspirational quotes on Instagram? It's up to you what you want your dream to be. Okay, okay, okay. If you want to learn more about what Intel is up to with the Intel Evo platform, check the link in the description. As always, I'm Dan from The New Travel. Thanks for watching.